This is perhaps the most fundamental of philosophical notions, the good and the one. <clears throat> As you can see, the word the in front of it makes it into a substantive. A good, A one would require an additional subject, but it's the good, the one. And he's going to try to show that this is a case where these two are identical. He's going to do it in seven sentences, the whole thing. What I would like to do in going through it is talk about terms and relations. Terms are ideas, relations are functions. So therefore, if we can take a look at the terms and see whether or not we can collect them and then order them into some kind of a hierarchy where it's hierarchical, as well as the hierarchy should also show the terms are dependent upon their prior. Therefore, we're going to focus on terms. There are only a few of them. And we want to then put them in a hierarchy to see how they're dependent upon their prior. We want to take a look at relations and picture them. This is what we want to do with relations. We want to picture them in some way. That's what we want to do. We want to picture them, make some foolish diagram, because that will then highlight their function. So then, the best thing to do is to make sure we're all using the same thing. Therefore, I made a couple of copies of this proposition and pass them around. Take a minute to look them over, please. We'll get her. Okay, please take a look at the first sentence. As a reader, you should collect. Okay, list or identify some things you're willing to call good. Called a good? Called good. Blossoming flowers. Whatever it is. Oh, I thought you were asking. 
for a list? From the text? No, no, just from your own experience. That's all. Unless you want me to offer some of my own. All right, wealth. How's that? Pretty good? How about wealth? Right, that's what you're doing next, right? Okay? All set? A couple more steps. A little more, it's more a little more difficult now. From your Present experience, just tell, write down, note, recall. Anything you would say that can be called a union. Now we're ready to work. All right, now we're ready to work. Again, in yes, any time, any time you have ever used the word union or can think of a time when you might, just give me a couple of examples, keep them in your mind. That's all. Right, so again, we have no list here. A list. List. Thank you. The Union Army Civil War. <laughs> Do you want to call that? That's Isn't that what they call it? Why should I reject anything? God. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, that's so what we're going to do now. We're going to take a look at the terms. That's a set of ideas. We're now going to focus on the relations between the terms. We're then going to put a whole bunch of terms in a hierarchy, and especially to see whether they're dependent upon their prior. Then we're going to picture the functions. We're going to picture them. And you've already made a nice list of things you'd call good. And six, same thing for the word union. All right, here we go. Ready? Now that, you must admit, is a work of art. That is fiction. Let's see if we can make sense of it. All right. What we're going to do is to stay in that first sentence after the initial statement of the proposition. And the initial statement of the proposition is, thank you for volunteering. Every good, good unifies what participates it or shares, or in, shares it. in it. All union is good, and the good is the same as the one. Right. right. Thank you. All right, good. Ha <laughs> that was a joke. OK. The term good see, brings about, the good brings about, see my colors, they're beautiful, All right? What does it do? Wholeness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's try it now. Right? If indeed it's the good that brings about the wholeness of all beings. See the bees? They're all beings. What is it curious about them? 
They all have a wholeness. Now look here. This is what we need. Wholeness. That's going to be one of our terms. Okay, then what does it do? If, if indeed it's the good that brings about the wholeness of all beings, then... Then the good unifies all beings. And unifies what? All beings. All beings. These are my beings again. See them being unified? <laughs> right, 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 right. But this time, would you read it, please? And what? Go ahead. If indeed the good brings about the wholeness of all beings. Say it brings about the wholeness of all beings. On this account, desire begins in all. That's right. Keep going. But what makes whole? But what makes whole, see, these things are being made whole, right? They're being made whole. Go ahead. And holds together the usia of each. And holds all. together. Right? See that arrow? Right? Holds together. Right? The being of each or the OC of each is? The one. Thank you. All right. Stop there. So, um, any of the things that you mentioned that you were willing to call good, remember the list? Right. Must there be some wholeness about each of these things? Ah, look here. If there is a wholeness, does that mean there must have been a whole in order to have the quality of wholeness? Ah. Well, then, look here. We've got these two terms now. It looks like this one is before it or prior. So we'll just put numbers on them later. Huh? But what makes whole and holds together the being or the C of each is the one. Now, look here. If it brings together, you see, if it brings together and it brings together a beings, wholeness of all beings, and it makes whole, makes whole, and then holds together whatever it is. See, if any of these things can be defined as having a boundary in any way, what maintains that boundary into the future? See, you have a great deal of money, wealth, let us call it. In order to have it, and for it to endure, it has to continue. It has to be held together in some way. You have to protect it. You have to do something with it, don't you? Or can you scatter it in the middle of a field and come back later and rake it up? No, right? There must be then something that holds it together. Therefore, each one of these things then, in order to be what they are, must have that curious thing. How about in health? Is that the same thing? In order for health, must there be something that unifies it all, that makes a wholeness about it? Uh, intelligence, uh, fitness, power. Must there be something that keeps it together so that it can function the way it does? If so, he's calling that. That's one. That's it. That's it. Keeps together one. Hmm. Well, if that's the case, I bet we can go further. If that's the case, then we can see that the good is related to the one, can't we? And this is the way in which it can be related. Because the good brings about the, being, the wholeness of all beings. Right? In good heavens, what does it do? It makes whole all of these beings and holds it together into a sea. What's that? The one? Well, then we can make a further statement, can't we? Let's try it. Then the good, could you read it for us? Now, go ahead. 
then the group for those it is pressing to brings completion as one. Now, here are a bunch of things. And as you can see, they are poorly defined, aren't they? So look here, if there's something that can bring these to completion, if it brings them to completion, then that idea of completion is that it now becomes a one when before it was a, a number of other things functioning together and it doesn't have a completion about it, therefore the parts are still working one against the other in different ways. Well then look here, then the good for those it is present to, right? Therefore, there's a presence of the good. And what does that com presence of the good do? Why, it completes them? It completes them, doesn't it? As what? As one. Ah. See, here he went from the good to the one. Now he's going from here to the good to the one. Wait a minute. First he went from the good to the one, and now he's going from the one. Look, the good to the one, then the good. Look here. Brings it, all of these things bring to completion as one. Huh. But it does more than that. What else does it do? It holds together. Right? It holds that completion. Would you agree that these things, if they have been brought to completion, if they continue in that state, if they continue in that state, then they have a union about them, don't they? Oh, remember, weren't you going to tell me about union? What's union? What? Got a union? Something in a union? A marriage. Okay, a marriage can be a union. Yes, very good. Right, we can use that. Then look here. Then it's not just enough that the good, because of the presence of the good that it brings completion as one. It can take two and they can function as one. But it continues. Why? It holds together according to the union. Ah. You know, uh, there are a lot of terms through here that have that, that uh, affectionate quality, that sexual quality, that uh, human quality, and it runs through all of Proclus. Matter of fact, I heard someone giving a talk about the likelihood of Proclus's language mirroring Tantra. And very interesting talk, so I can recall it to you later if you want. And I can even recommend you to talk to the author of it, since I happen to know, as I say, the author of this view. Ah, so let's go on. All right, here we are. We skipped a lot. Pardon me? Uh, we skipped, do, do we say by the one indeed all are made whole and dispersal deprives each of the no. No, have you noticed I haven't dealt with any of those in, in brackets? That's right. See, that's why the numbers are there. Yeah. I'm putting, letting them recede, so letting them recede. But just to see, so two of them. There'll be a third. All right, let's try it now. <clears throat> now let's try it up here. See, we have the same image brings together, holds together. That's looking at words as they function, get a picture of them. See this beautiful picture of embracing? Huh? Unusual, is it not, for such artistry to be displayed in public? Well, ah. The yin-yang symbols are gonna be part of it, it looks like. Okay. so. We need a nice reader. Thank you, Miss, for volunteering. And if the one is what brings together and holds together beings, it perfects each according to its presence. See, 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 according to its presence. What does it do? It perfects each of these beings. It perfects each of them. So each of them gets a little star. Ah, no, can't use the star with. Oh, okay. Hey. Little medals, little merit badges. So what does the one do? Come on, what does it do? It? 
brings together and pulls together. Keep going and, and perfects each. Uh, how does it do that? Well, it brings together and holds together means perfects each according to its presence. According to the presence of the one. Ah, ah. So, uh, right? This has got a power. This has some very interesting power. Right? Because all you then have to do is get in the presence of the one, and that's all you need. In propolis, that's all you need. Uh, but you have to be receptive to it. Well, look here. If this is the case, then what's happening then to all things? What's happening to these things? According to, its According to the presence of the one, each of them is becoming Held together. perfect. There's a perfection okay. there for it. Now, if that's true, then what's happening to these things? They're going through what? A unification, are they not? Mm. They're going through a unification. Ha! Ah. I just wanted to pick up some terms that we have been <coughs> using. Right. Completion, right? Union, unifies. <coughs> well, if that's true for all beings, then all beings then are being brought to a state of perfection by the presence of the one. Well then, if that's true, what can we say about unification? It's good for all. It's good for all. Ah, ha ha. Ah, no prejudice in the one. Right. Now, wait a minute. If that's the case, is it possible then that we can make a we can make a statement? Then, if unification is in itself good and it's good for all, would you not agree unification? is a process of bringing things together as a and to a union. Well then, look here, if the one is what brings together and holds together the being of each and brings each to a perfection, it's the presence of the one that brings that about, and that unification then is good for all, well then unification produces a union. But if union is in itself good, is it? If unification is in itself good, it's good for all, then wouldn't it follow then that union is itself good? Would you go along with that? That would follow, would it not? Union is itself good? Ha! Huh. And the good then is what unifies. Is that right? Is the good what unifies? Does it? Yes. Does it? And the good does what? By its presence. What does it do? See? Brings to completion. All right. According to the union. Ah. All right. But if union is itself good, and what's the good? The good is what unifies? Then the good is the same as the one. Because wouldn't it follow? If union is itself good, and the good is what unifies, well, then you have something quite interesting <clears throat> between union and unifies. Three terms are being used. Union, unity, unifies. Union is itself good if unification is good for all, because that's the result of it. And if the good is what's doing that unifying, well then, good heavens, wouldn't it follow then that the good is the one? Because would it not follow that if you have a <clears throat> if the good is what brings things according to a union, 
that's what you have. If the good is what brings things to a completion, holds together as one, and that holds it together according to the union, well, then, then the good is what unifies. And then we consider again, we say, look here, what's the one doing? Well, the one is what's doing what? It's unifying, isn't it? Go ahead. In the presence of the one, it brings all of these beings to perfection, brings them together, holds them together by its influence, it brings about a unification. Well, the good is the same as the one. There shouldn't be any difference then between the two. Well, there's the one. Brings together the beings of each, holds them together, right? Perfects them all by its presence. Wow. Here's the good. Brings it all about, right? And uh, by its very presence, right? What does it do? God heavens. See, it's the good by its presence. It brings all things to completion as one. Well, the good heavens, it looks like we're making a nice connection between the good and the one. Huh. And if we say, as it brings it, brings it to completion as one, and whatever it is that holds together, holds together according to the union, but what is it that holds together? Why, that's the one. Ah! Well, it holds together, you see, each, that's the one. And the good then, by its presence, brings everything together as one and holds it together according to the union. Well, that looks like the good is the one. Oh, in what way? Well, it would be unifying, wouldn't it? It would be unifying. And by that very unifying, it would be making things good. Ah. Hmm. Wow. Wait a minute, does that fit here? Does that fit? Health. Is health something that brings together things and holds them together and by its presence perfects the body? Then in this way, health is something that's a kind of a unifying power unification and it's good for anyone who is in need of that kind of healthiness, is it not? Well then health, right, is a unifying force. Is itself good for the body? Well, good heavens, then if the good is what what unifies, it looks like we can't escape that confusion, of that conclusion, right? Yeah, I like that. Pardon me? That it's present with health. Yes. Uh, how about uh, fitness? Try fitness. Does fitness try to bring together the body in a certain way and then maintain it over a period of time? Does it then perfect the body, bring it to a state of perfection? And by the, the continuation of fitness, the presence of fitness, right? It brings about a unification of the body and that's good for all bodies that want to be fit. Oh, does, let's, let's go, wait a minute, how about power? Will it work for power? I thought that's what we were talking about. Louder? Uh, this unification process with the one and the presence, uh, that's uh, power. Very powerful when that happens. Yes, but now we're ready. Yes, so, the, so the answer is yes. Well, you're probably either right or wrong yeah. in between. <laughs> right. right. I like to cover the possibilities. But let's try it. Right. Does power by itself bring things together? No. Uh, does it hold things together? No. Not unless it's directed by something. Is that right? Uh, uh, uh. Would you say that wealth is a power? Would you say that health has a power? Intelligence has a power? Fitness it brings about a power? Ah, but then it's not itself one of those things. Ah, why? Because by itself, does it have these qualities? Does it bring together by itself? Does it perfect things necessarily? 
Does it hold them together by its very presence? No. Correct. So then how do we how do we use that word? Do we say it's a consequence of those other things? Mm -hmm. Uh, you mean, how shall we use the word power? Yeah. Well, the first question is whether it fits into this group. Does yeah. it look like it fit? No. Oh, but each of these has a power. Right. But it itself is not in this class of things. I see, I see. I see. Uh, it is because it has to do something with the power. It has to be a unifying force. And in the process, it has to make things good. Would power just by itself do that? Or should it, should it bring something else with it, like these things? Mm -hmm. What are these things? Goodnesses. Ideals. These are goods, ideals. Goodness. Yes, these are good. The goodnesses, you might call them, are ideals. Wow. Uh, what does that mean, sir? Three? Yeah. There's another section we left out. Right? Good, good. Now, look here. If all of this is true, then we can just pull together the conclusions that we have. Goodness is union. Union is goodness. But I'd like to show something that's rather curious, right? I'd like to stay with this first. Goodness is union. All right. Look here. If each of these things have a union to it, then they have a goodness. Ah. Huh. If they have that, that quality of bringing together that union of these things, well, that union is a, is a goodness. It goes both ways, doesn't it? Goodness is union. Union is goodness. But then he concludes from goodness to the good and from union to the one. Now well, let's see. Let's do that. You see, if there is a redness, right, if you say there's something that has the quality of redness, must there not be red? If there is goodness, must there not be good for something else to have goodness? For something to be in a state of union, does that mean the parts then are separated and dispersed? Or are they brought together as a one? If there is a goodness, then that goodness, does that presuppose there must be something that is good? Yes. Ah. Then if union, the process of union, each one of the things that are brought together in a union, if it then is a one, now notice now the major difficulty in the history of philosophy We go from A1 to the one. So we're saying that behind all the union, behind all the unifications, behind the unifying, uh, behind the unity, that presupposes the existence of one as a quality. If so, then you're now talking not about A, but as it were, something that exists in its own right, and you use the word the. Because normally, would you not agree, a one what? Horse? What? A one horse? A two horses? Three horses? How about A one what? It requires a subject, right? Doesn't a noun. When you move here, that makes this into the noun. That makes this into a substance. It makes this into a thing. 
Well, let's see if we can do it here then. Let's take unifies unity and union. If there is such a thing as union, then if anything became into that state before it must have gone through a state where it was being unified, where there must be something that's going through unifying. There must be some unification. There must be some unification going on. Hmm. Well then, if there's something that's, if there's something that's, that uh, brings about a unification, then if it's completed, it's a unity. And if the parts then are brought together in such a way that they can then become in, and share a higher mode of existence in their unity, we can then say they have a union. But is not this all dependent upon the, pro the process of oneing? Right? Must it not go through a process of oneness or oneing? Let's see. Wealth has to be some process of bringing it together, unification. Then it has a unity. There must be something that unifies it doesn't do it by itself. Must be something that drives it, that unifies it. And if it's successful in that unifying, then it has a union. And now it has a different mode of existence than it had before. Then it has a oneness. It's gone through a process of oneing. And that presupposes the existence of a one. Huh. Oh, wait a minute. There's a wholeness. If there's a wholeness, that presupposes there must be a whole before there was a wholeness. But if it reaches a whole wholeness, quality of whole, and if it's whole in the sense that it is complete, then it may have gone through a process of completion. Ah. Because completion is more than unification. It means whatever you're dealing with has been brought to whatever is latent within it to its fruitful condition of being completed. Oh, then that's higher than just unification. Oh, well then, we're going to have to put that higher than just reaching a union. All right, okay, we'll make that higher. All right. Say, if it brings it to completion, it's bringing it to completion because all the parts are now functioning on a much higher level in a union, and therefore it would have a oneness, would it not? Huh. That oneness again presupposes a one. Do you see what we're doing? We're singling out these terms and we're seeing how they fit together and whether or not one is dependent upon another logically. And then we're arranging them in a hierarchy. Then we want to see whether we can use this language to talk about these things. We're missing one. Pardon me? I'm sorry, we're missing one term, aren't we? We're missing per perfect. Perfects? No, I was going to hold out. All right. hold no. Out no, 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 no. Perfection. Okay, now let's try it. Now, no, you're, no, you're, you're, uh, you're quite right. Let me put it in now. Yeah. Would you not agree in the same language? Completion, completion means whatever is possible within something is brought to its realization. But that doesn't necessarily mean it reached the state of perfection. It just means whatever is potentially possible to develop develops to that point. Perfection means, however, it goes beyond that. The parts themselves 
had within them a perfect ability. They had a perfectionable status. And therefore, you move from complexion to perfection, completion to perfection. That's a higher order. So we can say unification, not as high as completeness. Completeness is not a high, highest as perfection. Perfection is not as high as obviously the one. But co there's completion within perfection, isn't there? Uh, in a state of perfection. Well, some things may be complete without reaching com a perfection. Sure, yeah. Right? Okay. okay. Now let's go back. All right. See the statement? On this account, desire begins in all. This is nearly the very beginning of this curious game of philosophy. Let's try it. If there is such a thing that brings about the wholeness of all beings, and what makes whole, right? what makes whole, see, each one of them is made whole, and holds together the see of each as the one, now, what is usiyah? That's another word for being. But it has a special meaning. And that is, see this arrow? It can turn upon itself. And therefore, that's sometimes called a reversion. <clears throat> Things can revert either in terms of their own being, in terms of their vitality, or in terms of their intelligence. These are the three different ways. But for here, therefore, whatever holds things together, see, there has to be something that maintains them, that holds them together. Whatever it is is something that turns it upon itself. There must be something within it that keeps us there. What is it in man? What is it in us? that keeps our sense of identity. What is that thing within us that keeps our sense of identity? Because with it we can reflect upon ourselves. Only things that have language can do this. You can't revert upon yourself unless you have a language. Now, take some kind of degree of intelligence then to turn about and think of yourself as a subject and where you're going and whether or not it should be perfected. Well, whatever it does, that constant reflection maintains, ma that's a maintaining power. Usia, being. Being. That's the one. That's another way of talking about the one. The one has a power for turning it about and completing it as a degree of perfection. Well, anything that would see that and recognize that, whatever it is, very likely then, if it sees that capacity, that there's something in the very nature of reality that brings things together in such a way that a wholeness is there, and that presupposes that there's something at work that brings things as a whole. There's something then that perfects them. Well, if that's the case, then desire begins in all because all things would want to share in it and know more about it. Therefore, it would desire it. Therefore, on this account, desire begins in all. See, once you reflect on this, once you reflect on this, then you, you naturally want to know more about it. Where is this wholeness? Is it possible that there is something in the nature of reality that has this quality of wholeness? I mean, reality isn't dumb and stupid, billiard balls bouncing around at random? Yeah. Well, look, look here. Let's go back to something. That holding together and maintaining it and maintaining its status, right, that's a very powerful and interesting quality about the nature of living things that have intelligence. Well, 
if you didn't have that, that one that does that, what would follow? Well, by the one, all are made whole. Uh-oh. Oh, wait a minute. And dispersal, leaving the one, deprives each of this power of maintaining itself into a unity. Well, let's see whether that's the case. Let's take another look at it. Would you say this is true from what we've said? Whenever then, some, whatever they may be, fall away from the good, they are deprived of sharing in the one. They're the same. And without any share in the one, they're deprived of the good in the same way. And therefore, to whatever degree they're deprived of the one, they're also deprived of the good. Hmm. So if you fall away from the good, you also sure fall away from that unity, that unification, that perfection, that completion. And then with no share in that oneing, that one, well, they're deprived of the good in the same way since the good functions in the same way as the one, and the one functions in the same way as the good. Huh. Well, I guess it's important to find out how to keep from, keep from falling away from the good. Therefore, the good is the target, is, is the goal. You don't want to miss that, right? So here's the good. Right. Right. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to fall away from the good. Because if you miss it, if you miss the good, here's our target. Well, to that degree, fall away from the good, they're deprived of sharing in the one. Well, to that degree, then they lose their sense of unity, they lose their sense of wholeness, lose their sense of completion, no longer thinking about unifying or any of these higher things. There's no perfection in it all. Oh, by the way, what's interesting, is it not, is that, um, To keep, from, to keep from falling away from the good, to keep from falling away, right? this language, right? That's a, uh, uh, to keep from, from missing the mark or the target. Because if you don't keep from missing, you know, if you don't stop yourself from missing the mark, wow, you're going to miss the mark and all of these things are going to follow. By the way, the Greek word for to keep from missing the mark is translated as this word. And to keep yourself from it, right, to escape it, to free yourself from it, um, That's to free oneself. Um, that's remission. Repentance. Repentance, sir. Thank you. Right. See, in order to keep yourself from missing the mark, you, need, you know what you have to do? You have to turn your mind around. You have to keep your mind on what you're doing. You have to keep your mind on what you're doing. And if you keep your mind on what you're doing, you have to turn your mind around from missing the mark. And that's the word that's translated as repentance. But it's really turning the mind around. Right? That's the idea. Turn your mind around so you keep from missing the mark. 
So this language has been picked up and is and, uh, commonly used in uh, Stoic thinking, especially Stoic thinking and Christianity both. So then let's go back. Going back to the first statement now. Every good unifies what shares in it. Every good unifies what shares in it. Right? And all union is good. Therefore, the good and the one are identical. So we go back to where we started from after this excursion. And we say, now look here, have we offered some possible way of understanding that the good and the one are identical? Well, we started out with these, right? Every good, these are goods, unifies with shares in it. All union is good. We did that several times. Well, then good heavens, you know what that means? It means they're the same. So we have looked at the terms. These are the terms. We've seen how you can put them in a priority. We took a look at the relations and the functions, and we drew these beautiful pictures to show how they function. And then we wanted them to list or identify the things that you would call good and those that you call, in, call a union or that has achieved a union. So let's see now whether we can read this in terms of the very thing that was suggested. All right. A relationship that has reached some completion. Shall we? And let's get a reader just to read it through with that in mind without changing anything other than that. Right? Just read it through. And we need a volunteer, do we not? Good, thank you for volunteering. Yeah. Can you substitute for us? Substitute? Yes. Uh, or read it in mind. Come on, read it with that in mind. Come on, let's do it. All right. Every good, such as unity of two loving beings, unify what shares in that union. Yeah. And that union is? Um, a loving union. And what, what, what are you going to call it? What do I want to call it? Yeah. Good. Do it. Right. Right. Got to get back. Right. Got to get back. Right. Right. Okay. And if that's so, then? The, all union is good, and the good is the same as the one. Right. Because they become a? A one. By heaven. One, they become Very one. good. How about the next sentence? If indeed. The good brings about the wholeness of all beings. Hey, it brand, brought these two together. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And then what does it do? Brings about the wholeness. Brings about the wholeness of this relationship. Right. Go ahead. And? Mm, it makes them whole and holds together the usia of each. And it holds Except. together that relationship, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? Whatever it is that turning about, would you not agree they're likely have gone through some kind of reflection on themselves? And upon one another. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Keep going. And then the good for those it is present to brings completion as one. Well, then to the degree that that's true, what do we say? Therefore, the good to those it is present to. There will be completion as, as one. one. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and it will hold together according, according to that union. Hmm. 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 Well, go ahead. Next paragraph. And if the one is what brings together and holds together beings. Now he's saying, hey, hey, hey. Now we take the other side. If the one is what brings together and, and holds together, holds together beings, beings. It perfects each. Therefore, this is a perfection. perfection. According to its presence. According to the presence of the one. Because 
the oneness that they experience to that degree brings about a perfection. Ah, go ahead. Then in this way, unification is good for all. Hey, if it's good for these two. Right, 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 right. But if union is in itself good. Yeah, if that unification is in itself good. And the good, the good is, is what unifies. And the good is what does that unify. Unify. Right. Then. The unqualified good and the unqualified the, one is the same. Yeah, unifying and. Good. No, no, go ahead. Goodness, I'm sorry. Unifying and at the same time making beings good. Right. It unifies them, and at the same time, it makes each of these good. Right? Hmm. Hmm. Go ahead. A little bit more. Indeed. And now, this is that third remark where it's the negative case. Yeah. Right? Go ahead. Indeed. Whenever those that in some way fall away from that. And if either of these fall away from that, go ahead. They are at the same time deprived of sharing in the one. Right? That oneness that they achieve. Go ahead. And when those come to have no share in the one, <coughs> they, lost they the, are deprived of the good. They've lost the good in the same way. The same way. Ah, yeah. Now? Goodness is union. Right. And union is goodness. Natch. The good is the one. Naturally. And the one is primarily the good. Right. Right, right, right. Um, what's metaphysics? If this is metaphysics. Pure language rooted in the profound. Right. Yeah. Well, seven sentences is all this cookie is. Right. Nothing out of place. Even though I left one word out, perfection. Thank goodness there was a colleague who'd re remind me. Well, I was following your dependency and hierarchy. Well, so we have I, I was holding it, but I held it for too long. Mm. So that's what I wanted to do. I had a question. Now we throw it open for those things. Being. Being vitality and intelligence. So this is the principal term, or Sir? principal terms, right? I didn't hear that. The principal terms of Platonic metaphysics are the good and the one, correct? Yes. And these, these are, are the subsidiary terms mm -hmm. that are used to bring them together. Yeah. But these, there's a whole bunch of affirmative statements. So this is different than the negative side of speaking about the one or the good, right? Like the, high, the first hypothesis of Plato's Parmenides it says the one is a whole bunch of, not a whole bunch of things, <laughs> instead of the one functioning in these ways. Instead of saying a whole bunch of things that the one does, the first hypothesis speaks about the one, about what the one is not. That's true. Well, I'll do it again. That's true. Mm -hmm. oh, was that good? Was that good? But he didn't make the point. He may still have, and therefore, yeah, Smith. If you raise both hands, you're called on. I want to go from metaphysics to physics and look at a black hole. It's definitely a one. It brings about a huge amount of oneness from a lack of oneness. And I want to propose that rather than being good, it is anti-good or whatever you want to say, in as much as it gets rid of information. And information is intelligence, vitality. What was the last part of Lucia? Being. 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 And a black hole, by getting rid of information, produces anti -usia. And yet it is the Does nearest thing we can get <coughs> to a one 
ness or one bring in physical entity? No. Okay. Um, let us. Does it does it have all of these qualities? Perfection, completion. In as much as it's pretty well unchanging to say it has perfection. No, no. Things that don't undergo change don't have to be perfect. It's perfect. Just because something doesn't go through change doesn't mean it's perfect. My uncle Louis was one of those people. Okay, well, he never uh, went through how, any how change in his about, entire life, and he wasn't perfect. How do you talk about perfection or lack, lack thereof? Pardon me? Pardon me? How do you talk about perfection or lack thereof to the physical object? I'd say it's pretty perfect. Um, probably you might be able to talk about a certain class of things that might have that property. Uh, are you familiar? You're probably familiar with that article that came out two weeks ago. And uh, um, was actually it was in the uh, New York Times, but I imagine it hit LA Times too. The study of the new particle that splits and separates and then rejoins at a future time and place. Therefore, it seems to exhibit intelligence, even though it's separated and moves at a certain distance. If so, then it's returning to its unity. And we would like to see whether or not when it returns to its unity, it gains something as a consequence of its trip. Right? And now we can talk about it in, these, in this way. Right? If it adds something to it, then that would be a degree of perfection, let us assume, rather than a loss in energy. Or I didn't read that. <clears throat> oh, okay. Okay. About okay. Something I don't know about. But okay. I do know about, about black holes. And um, black holes seem to the epitome of oneness. Well, <clears throat> would you agree a black hole reduces all things to one to one? Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Therefore, there are no differences in that one. No difference. Right? Absolutely no differences. Yeah. But in this dialogue, <clears throat> we were trying to find things that are a many that could be brought together into a union that had a quality of oneness about them. And that isn't the case in a black hole. Yeah. But uh, the fact that light is attracted to necessarily to black holes, uh, which is why space is curved, those points, um, suggests that man, right? <laughs> Man is like a black hole, and he hopes to be, he wants all the light to be attracted to him. <laughs> Enough of my humor. Um, yeah, okay. I, I couldn't do anything with that, by the way. I, I need your help for that. You, you were kind of touching on the question here. If you have to turn your mind around to keep from missing the mark. Yeah then is that what wholeness is? Because that's what the good brings. The good brings about wholeness of all beings. And if, if it's turning the mind around that keeps you from missing the mark, and that's what the good brings, then is that what wholeness is? Turning the mind around to keep from missing the mark? Is there some... Is there some uh, I, uh, you may be right, but it looks like in this case, uh, Turning about is to bring about the wholeness. Right? If I'm right, if I'm missing the mark, there's something wrong with what I'm doing. So I correct that. That doesn't mean necessarily that I'm gonna hit the target until I try again, right? Needs a process, doesn't it? Gotta turn the mind around and then see then wholeness looks like a process too. Seems then by this reasoning that if, if the good brings wholeness, then that's what it's doing. Well, let's try it. Well, let's try it. Okay. We don't have to do that. Yeah. Let's let's hold the idea first rather than reject it. <clears throat> um,
If he misses the target, the expression is a marchion. Miss the mark. Uh, to keep from missing the mark, mm -hmm. turn your mind around. From distractions. Right? Hey, keep your mind on it. I can't, I can't reach it. Well, okay, what do they mean? They mean when they say keep your mind on it or to concentrate, they really mean don't think about anything else. Right? And that's turning your mind around. The better word for would be away. <clears throat> right, away from the distractions. And see, so if this has been something that's been going on, then you want to release yourself right? or free yourself from missing the mark by turning your mind around from the distraction, so you then presumably have a greater chance of hitting the mark. <clears throat> now, how does that help? Well, it, it helps up to the point where I still now want to put wholeness into it because that's, see, the, the reasoning went that whenever some fall away from the good, they're deprived of sharing in the one. And we took, you took that back to, if you turn your mind around, well, mm -hmm. turn your mind away to keep from missing the mark. But that's what it is to keep from falling away from the good. So if you're going to keep from falling away from the good, then you're going to be... <laughs> I can't even get the language, but it's the good... Since the good brings about the wholeness, then that's what you would be doing. You would be bringing about wholeness if you're keeping yourself from missing the mark. You'd be somehow unifying something, right? You'd be unifying. Something. If you are successful <laughs> in freeing yourself from missing the mark by turning. That's right. Turning the mind around, reflecting. Right. Or reflecting. Right. right? That's how you keep yourself from missing the mark. You yeah. turn, reflect. If it's successful, then you've achieved a wholeness. Oh, okay. If it's successful, you've achieved a wholeness. Right. Zen and the art of archery. Pardon? Zen and the art of archery. Yeah, yeah. Zen and the art of archery actually <laughs> comes out of uh, Mark 1.5. Thank you. I'm still puzzled also about this Lucia thing. I mean, it's not to take the image literally because to literally shoot an arrow and come back on the mark might be somewhat painful. But um, <laughs> I just wanted to puzzle on for a second. Mm -hmm. um, oneness brings about Lucia because when some, that's what he said here, but mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering, is there a Lucia in oneness? One, uh, things like life, being, and intelligence have a Lucia. They can turn about on themselves and mm -hmm. become complete. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering, I mean, is that is that the thing that oneness adds to each one of these? The fact that it now oneness adds this thing quality called Lucia. Is that the, the driving factor in what makes something have Lucia? That it, let me put it this way: Can can oneness participate in Lucia or have a Lucia to it in the same way that being, life, and intelligence do?
Okay. All right. <clears throat> If, <coughs> sorry. No. if there are many things that have some quality, then the things that have that quality are not the cause of that quality, but they share in that quality from something else. Right. Agree? Therefore, if there are a bunch of these things that have a reflective capacity, they can turn about and say, who am I? You know, like, you can't avoid this activity. Of course, I'm not sure about that. I don't think you can. Well, I was just saying, say, well, like, why, why do you, why is there this? There's only this because there's a problem. And the basic and most fundamental problem for man, right, is that he has to make sense of what he is, he, she is, in the life that he has, or she has, right? You have to make sense of it. Here's your life. Starts here, ends here, right? Okay. Now, that's absolutely impossible. It's totally impossible. Because you don't know, how, you, you don't know what you were doing before you were here. You don't know where you're going if you are going anywhere after here. Therefore, you have no before. You ain't got no after. And you're in the middle with a profound mystery you're trying to figure out, and you don't have the two other pieces. I mean, if you have to understand the whole, man is caught in an intrinsic dilemma. Intrinsic because if you knew why you were here, if you could account for why you were here, how you got here, right? That certainly might help you understand what you're doing here. <laughs> In the same way that if you could figure out that what you're doing here may have some effect on where you're going, that would certainly highlight the need to reflect upon yourself. But you don't have that. It's a prof Man is born into a profound problem. And this is the nature of the problem. Therefore, people wait, you know, people look at one another, they say, oh, hell. No, no, they say, hello, they turn it around. Yeah, right? No, right? Now look here. In this predicament, you have to turn around and say, just who am I? What am I? What am I doing here? What's life? Where's the, what's, where's the, where did that person go? They're no longer dead? How'd they do that? What's death? What dies? I don't know. What lives? I don't know. We are therefore driven to reflect upon ourselves and our existence. All people do that. Therefore, it's a quality we all share. Right? We all share in this wonder, this capacity to wonder. Turning about upon ourselves and wonder. Hey, that's who's saying That's what's there. Do most people do it extremely rarely, if at all? No, a recent, uh, recent study in Brooklyn, Flatbush, indicated that 99 and 3 eighths percent of all the people are weird. <laughs> no. Everybody yes. I think everybody does it. Don't, don't you? Don't you think so? No. They just don't notice it. I think everybody needs to do it. They don't appreciate it. They can't maintain it because they turn on the television set. No, no. Hey, even TV, even with TV, you may wonder. Most people. I mean, all they need is their mother to drop dead, their no. father. Now, Plato and a few others. Have a friend and get the lotto. I said, what the hell did you get lotto for? I didn't. Plato and a few others, though, have taken this dilemma yes. and shown how it's metaphysically a part of man by pushing it into the soul and then up into intelligence and and into being itself. This. And so this is an interesting example, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but taking it from the other yeah. point, why, why then is it so important to see who see it in, in, in metaphysics? Well, you don't, you don't, pardon me, you don't seek it, if that's what you said, didn't you? See it. See it, okay. In order to do this, that presupposes intelligence, doesn't it? 
Right? Like one of the best intelligence tests there is is see whether someone can catch a joke. Then you know they're intelligent. Right? That's the only thing you need. You don't need all the other stuff, right? I got a good one. I get that off, right? So to be able to do this presupposes intelligence. And the assumption behind it is that you think it's that you are better for doing this than not. Built into that is the idea that, hey, you know what? If it would be possible to make meaning meaningful our existence, it would be good for us to know that meaning. So intelligence, right? We are then confronted with meaning, trying to discover the meaning of things. But if you try to use the intelligence to discover the meaning of it now, watch, we're going to move. From your existence, suppose you say, you know, uh, I don't even know why there is something rather than nothing. I mean, why is, there, why is there something rather than nothing? If there ever was nothing, there'd never be something. Because nothing would keep on going on. If it's a pure nothingness out of nothing, that's nothing can arrive. Right? Therefore, if there ever was nothing, there wouldn't be anything around. Because if it was a pure nothingness, you aren't going to get anything out of a pure nothingness, are you? Not even a deposit for a beer can, right? Right, right. Right, look here. If there's a pure nothingness, ever, if there was ever a pure nothingness, nothing can ever come out of that. Therefore, you might then shift to Yes, I am very much interested in my own existence and the existence of myself, but you know what? I wonder why there is anything at all. I mean, what is the nature of the intelligence that I have that I'm directing to discover myself? Because I can use that same intelligence and discover, try to discover what is. You know, just what is, you know, like, what the hell is this thing? You know, where did this come from? Why is it here in the first place? Pretty interesting. Well, um, think it's better being here than not? No, it's just a thing. I'm just a thing. No, I have intelligence. Oh, I can reflect upon myself. I can reflect upon the chalk. I can ask not only, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. this is not right. How can I ask what meaning it has? Because that's knowing the why, is it not? Why something is the case, why I am what I am, why this chalk is what it is. But before you can ask why what something is, you must know what it is. Well, how can you discover what it is? Because it's in time, and everything in time is changing. Well, wait a minute. If whatever is changing, now look here, see? Whatever is changing, if to whatever degree it's ordered, well, then it must be changing for some reason. There must be some pattern. Oh. Well, if, the, if our whole universe, me, the chalk, goes through changes, but the changes are come out of a pattern, then the pattern really is what exists because that pattern is not going to change. It's going to account for the changes. Well, then what is the pattern? upon which all existence is based. And how come there's a pattern for all things that are changing? Well, there's a pattern. Maybe there's something that's patterning. Well, there's something that is doing the patterning. What is he doing it for? Bored? No. Uh, what are we doing? We're seeing. Right, turning about, turning about, passing. 
Is that word pattern interchangeable with model, or are those two? Yeah, words? you could use model or ideal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's metaphysics? Pardon? What's metaphysics? Um, yeah. the, the metaphysics is a is a um, is a bad word because literally it was the section after the physics that Aristotle wrote about. The right word is theology, right? Elements of theology. This is theology. Metaphysics officially is the first study of first principles, but the study of first principles is are the elements of theology. Yeah. According to the legend, uh, Aristotle classified everything, and someone said, hey, what are you going to do with this? And he says, oh, I don't know. I'm going to stick it in after physics. And someone, <laughs> said, someone says, what's the word for after physics? He said metaphysics. He said, good name for it. That's what I'll call it. You may not find this in any local history book. But... <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take more questions if you have any. Okay. Thank you. Always enjoy it. Hold it, please. Wealth business. Um, Good. Now, I know wealthy people, and I know healthy people, and I know intelligent people. But I've known some weird health, weird wealthy people that weren't so good. You know, weird, wealthy people that were good? That weren't so good. Yeah, that's true. What does so, that got? No, these are just the ideas of wealth, not the people who are wealthy. Oh, okay. Because that would take us into another discussion. Sir. Um, the idea of beauty and the, and the word beauty, it hasn't even been hasn't even been mentioned tonight, and I'm wondering if... Uh, That's my bad memory. Um, I don't know if Proclus even, in, in a, what we've discussed, what's the elements of theology, right? I don't even know if, if he even comes across the, the no, word beauty. Don't. Does he, uh, in, in certain propositions, does he relate sir, it? If, if you're asking, I think he does. He does, okay. So, but it's different propositions than, than number 13, right? Quite true. Okay. And if you're looking... So how does it relate to Proposition 13, the idea of beauty? Well, I was going through a couple of steps before you jumped ahead. The idea of beauty is understood as irradiation, a, uh, a, a flowing, a, a luminescence, a radiance that proceeds from each and through each of these levels. And that is said to be beautiful. Okay. I can handle that. Yeah, oh, good. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, I, I, I enjoy thinking about it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah.